guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. On today's video, guys, I'm going to be doing yet again another movie review. And if you watched my last review, you know that I was trying to keep it a little bit of a surprise uh, what the next review would be on. And I'm sure a lot of you were not expecting this review to be coming. Um, and probably don't even know what this movie is in the first place. Never heard of it, anything like that. Um, but it, it, it is surprisingly in theaters and only in theaters right now. Um, and it will not be playing on streaming services until the beginning of next month. Um, and, uh, so yeah, the movie I'm going to be reviewing on today is Kyle Edward Ball's Skinnamarink. Very interesting title for the movie, and, uh, before we get on to all the talk about this and everything like that, um, if you are subscribed to over at my Ars Political channel, I uploaded a video yesterday, finally returning to the channel, and so hopefully I can continue doing routine videos for that channel if you are subscribed. And so go watch that video if you have not watched it, otherwise... Getting on to this review, not a whole lot to talk as far as plot details or anything like that, but kind of the story behind uh, this film and how I went to go see it, because otherwise, if I didn't do this, probably would have never, you know, probably would have crossed my mind, never would have thought about it ever again, anything like that, until maybe the ending of the year where I was like, man, I should have checked that movie out, because it kind of sounded interesting when people are talking about their movies that they watched over the year and everything like that. Um, but I'm actually really glad I went to go see this movie. It's a very different movie, and I like different. I like to try out different movies. Um, I've already watched three horror movies this month, and, um, or I guess, I mean, one of them wasn't so much a horror, but more of a thriller, but you get what, you get what I mean, uh, horror-related, uh, movies this month. And January, surprisingly, been a pretty good month for movies. Usually January does not have any in, anything interesting being released, but uh, we're off to a good start this year with movies. And this one, um, while I'm not going to say whether or not it's like really good or bad yet, um, it's interesting. It's very interesting, and it definitely hooked me on right away. Uh, basically, I was working last week, and I, I was like skinnamarink, very interesting title, not really sure what it's about. So you know, I just go give a check inside the theater while the movie's playing. And I'm, I sit in there for about a minute, and I'm like, I need to go check this out. <laughs> I need to check out this movie. It looks, it, it definitely is my type of movie, and I definitely want to try it out. And so I watch some reviews for it, watch the trailer to get, kind of get more of an idea on what it's about. And I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely watching this movie. Definitely want to try it out. Definitely going to support the, the indie, um, small uh, directors and creators who are at the start of their career. If you don't know, the guy who directed this, I think this is one of his first movies, and he's, I think he's had a YouTube channel in the past where he made kind of like short horror stories and things like that, and so this is his first movie that he's releasing in theaters with his biggest budget, with a whopping $15,000 budget. This is an extremely low-budget movie, but overall, it was actually a success in the box office. It made over a million dollars now, one, I think $1.5 as of today. And so it's a huge success for him, and I'm, I'm really happy for the director. And he's going to continue to deliver content, hopefully in the future, that is just as good as this one. Because this one is definitely a very experimental movie. You can tell it's his first time, and he was kind of trying out different things and, seeing like, and stuff like that, and seeing if it would work. And so I'm really glad that it was a financial success for him and that he's going to be able to continue his career. So I'm really, really glad about that. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, really glad that this movie was uh, a success. Um, even if it was, wasn't was a good movie, I could totally respect, you know, the direction he was going in. But overall, I thought the movie, all in all, pretty good film. I, I'm glad, I'm glad that I spent my time watching something different like this and not just watching, you know... 15, you know, 15 to 20 movies this year that were all just the popular ones that everybody was probably, any movie watcher is probably going to see and things like that. I'm glad this year so far I've watched a few different movies that maybe not everybody's going to see because they don't, you know, they maybe got a little bit of a bad rep, they're not really sure about it, but I've tried a lot of different things this year and so I'm really glad that I, I tried this movie out. And if you're wondering what the plot is about and things like that, um, basically, as they describe it in, in the title of the movie, uh, or in the description, whatever, um, it's basically about these two kids that wake up in the middle of the night, and, um, their dad is missing, and all the windows in their house have vanished. And <clears throat> that is a very, very simple explanation for it. Once you get to the last 30 minutes, 
everything sort of makes sense of like why stuff is happening and things like that. Um, it's still a very, very baseline plot. Like there's not a lot to it. You almost never see like a full character's face in the movie. Um, there's not a whole lot of dialogue. It's just uh, much of this movie is just static images. Really, really, this whole movie could just be static images or little pair, you know, paraglides that are going slowly. Uh, a lot of sounds and things like that. It's just like very, very. Everything in this movie is very, very baseline, and uh, there's just not a whole lot to it. Not a lot of dialogue. Not a lot of character interaction. You don't see the characters a lot on screen. A lot. It's really focused on just the shots, the sounds, the visuals, and things like that to kind of capture this special feeling inside of your head. And so I thought that was really interesting, and that's what makes this movie really experimental. Um, but yeah, basically, it's, it's you know, at the beginning of the movie, that's kind of the plot that you're handed with. At, towards the ending of the movie, makes a little bit more sense. Um, but yeah, basically, two kids at the beginning of the movie. Um, I believe it's a little boy and a little girl. Uh, and then the dad is in the house. Uh, there's a mom as well, but she's not really uh, as major. She's in a couple of scenes, but it's mostly the, the dad um, in, you know, maybe the first half of the movie until he, uh, eventually disappears, and then we get, I'm not gonna spoil it, another kind of major character that kind of explains to us, like, why all this is happening and things like that. But yeah, you know, stranger and stranger things just start to happen towards, towards the final act of the movie, and, uh, and it, it just gets really, really good towards the end. And so, yeah, like I said, very experimental movie. A lot of it is just... Uh, like, I would say 75% of this movie is just looking at walls and the ceiling and a toy on the floor or something like that with cartoon music in the background or, you know, just static in the background um, and, and just things like that. Um, it kind of reminds me of some of those, like, internet horror videos where they put out, like, these images that are supposed to, like, evoke a certain image in your in your mind. It kind of reminds me of that, like, kind of, like, internet horror stuff you've ever seen that where you're supposed to watch the video and have the lights switched off and, and it's supposed to ev evoke this, this certain feeling and things like that. It's kind of what this movie reminds me of. And I definitely recommend watching this movie in theaters because, not because it's, like, it's really good on the big screen or whatever, um, but just it with with it being a big screen and obviously theaters very very dark uh, you know while the movie is going um, it's definitely gonna capture more of that feeling that they're trying to go with and it's gonna be even more scary it's gonna deliver a more scarier experience so I would definitely recommend watching this movie in the theaters if you still can probably not gonna be out in theaters for very much longer otherwise if you're gonna watch this at home I recommend you know, being in a dark room, shutting all your lights off, and, you know, just watch it all by yourself, maybe with one other person, and just have all your lights off, and, uh, you know, try to keep quiet during the movie, <laughs> and uh, it, it'll definitely, uh, it, it'll definitely be a whole nother experience than if you just had all your lights on, you were in your living room, whatever, um, definitely do this, you know, at night, all lights turned off, and it's, it's gonna really enhance the experience, so this movie, for being his first one and being very experimental, actually works really well in a theater, which which surprised me a lot. So this movie is surprisingly very effective in a movie theater, so I like that about it as well. And, um, um, you know, some people, I heard a lot of people complain about the pl how the plot is not very discernible, um, and, uh, you know, it just makes it much worse when you don't have any plot and a majority of the movie is just static images, which they're not wrong. The majority of the movie is just static images, a few jump scares scattered here and there, a few creepy moments. Um, but I don't think that the plot is necessarily indiscernible. I, you know, by the ending of the movie, um, you kind of get a brief idea and I like how he keeps it simple. He doesn't, you know, try to I think a lot of people try to overcomplicate um, these types of movies um, and uh, try to, you know, say something that I don't think the director was ever intending on, never thought about, anything like that. I, I think this movie is supposed to have a very brief, simple plot that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, and you just kind of got to go with it. it. It's not really... I've heard some people say, you're supposed to make it up along the way, like, what you think this movie is going to be out, which I can understand... Um, um, but, uh, you know, people who say that there's no discernible plot and that, uh, it just doesn't really make any sense, 
what I would say to that is, it, it's a very brief plot, but I don't think it is supposed to make much sense. Like, you, you're handed what you, what you are, uh, and it doesn't really make much sense, but it, it works. You, you understand what it is, but it, it doesn't really make sense why it is that way, why this is all happening, and so there, there's no context. It's not that the plot is not discernible, there's just no context to the situation. Uh, you don't really know these characters very well, you don't know why all this stuff is happening. You're just handed this, and that's all there is to it. And I think um, this 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 mo this uh, regular sized movie has more of a short film um, like plot structure, where a lot of short films have very very simple plots, where not everything is supposed to be revealed about the characters and things like that. Um, and so I think that's where a lot of people get confused because with short films, usually people understand that a little bit more, that things are not supposed to be super complex, but with this movie, people were trying to like overcomplicate it a lot and things like that. And I just think that he was experimenting with a regular size movie, trying to make a little money in the process maybe, uh, with his extremely low budget and also kind of experimenting at the same time with, with a regular size movie. Cause obviously he probably wasn't going to want to release a 20 minute, you know, movie uh with just these static shots and things like that he probably could he could probably really cut down a lot of the meat and do that but i like that he was a little ambitious just kind of went for it all and uh overall it was uh, it was a huge success for him the only complaint that i have i do not think this movie was boring i think the runtime was reasonable it never felt like this movie was going on forever and i was looking at my watch and i'm like when is this movie gonna get over like obviously i always look at my watch when i'm in the movie theater just to kind of keep up with the time but I wasn't looking at it because I was like, when is this movie going to be uh, over already? I was kind of like, when's when's the climax going to happen? When are things, like, are we ever going to learn about things? Is things, like, wh what's going on here? And then you get to the last, like, 30 minutes of the movie and things start to make a little bit more sense. There's a little bit more interaction going on and things get really, really weird and creepy. And so... If there was more of that scattered throughout the film, more jump scares, more disturbing shots and things like that, especially the toys and things like that, I think this movie would be a little bit better. Uh, but again, very experimental movie, um, and I, I do like the build-up. It definitely pays off, especially in the last 15 minutes. Really, really creepy stuff at the end of there. So um, that last 30 minutes, definitely the best part of the movie, and probably an easy, like, nine, almost easy probably 9 out of 10 almost 10 out of 10 right there just really good towards the end of there um that in of itself could just be a short like 10 minute segment where you have no context but you just watch it and you're like what the hell is this because really really good stuff at the end there um and uh, yeah things really start to pick up in the, in the last half hour um and things start to make a little bit more sense um so overall what i'm gonna what am i gonna be giving this movie um out of 10 on Rotten Tomatoes, I just rated it today, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars, which would equate to a 7 out of 10. I'm going to give this movie, I'm a little bit generous, a 7.5 out of 10, just because I really, really like the ending. I think if the ending kind of just stuck with what the rest of the movie was, it, would be, it, it wouldn't be as good. Uh, and In fact, I probably would have thought it was really boring. But because the ending got so good and so... Um, creepy and you know disturbing eerie whatever um i'm giving it a 7.5 out of 10 it definitely uh boosted that score um a little bit and so yeah like i said this is not going to be a movie for everybody it's an extremely experimental movie and only a very specific group of people are going to understand this movie for what it is and um it definitely uh, evoked certain feelings in my head with some of the audio uh you know audio things where you're like not really sure not really sure what what you're hearing and you you really want to know what you're hearing or you're not sure what you're seeing but you really want to hear what you're seeing um and there's just a lot of like little subtle things in here that make this movie a little bit creepier with some of the sound cues that he does when things are like suddenly vanishing um so i think he did a lot of good things here and uh, i'm glad that uh that his uh, experiment was a success and that he will likely be continuing on in his, his career with an extra 
$1.5 million in his pocket plus more. Um, you know, he's still got a little bit more time to make more money, and so I'm good for him. Um, I thought this was uh, a prototype that worked well. Uh, it wasn't, you know, perfect or anything like that, but if this is what he delivers for a prototype, imagine how good his films in the future could be. So, uh, big credit to the director here, and overall, I wouldn't. Re I mean, if if you are intrigued by this movie and you think that this movie is for you, watch it in the theaters. Otherwise, if it's not at your local theater, it'll be out in streaming services soon. And turn off your lights in your room. You know, no, absolutely no light, just complete darkness, and watch this movie. And I think you will find it very, very um, interesting, and um, you'll feel good about yourself for for watching something a little different for once. So yeah, uh, that is going to be it for the review. Not a whole lot to talk about in, the, in as far as or explaining the plot or anything like that. Just a lot to talk about, how, you know, my thoughts and what other people thought and things like that. So yeah, that's going to be it for the review. Stay tuned for future content. Just going to be continuing what I regularly do. And if you subscribe to Ars Political, stay tuned over there as well because I'm going to be uploading regularly over there um, uh, from now on. So. Other than that, that is going to be it. Like and subscribe, guys, and I will see you next time.